Wake up in a panic We're in over our heads again We know this is what we're meant to do So we wake up Put our feet on the floor Go and conquer the day like a warrior Like warriors Cause that's what a trap does We got your back so you can relax And focus on all the important stuff Like getting your business done This is our tribe We look out for each other panic anymore we got lots of support and an army of warriors by our side we fight the good fight when we unite we fight the good fight when we unite cause that's what a tribe does we got your back so you can relax Focus on all the important stuff Like getting your business done This is our tribe We look out for each other That's right, that's right This is our tribe We help each other In a panic, we're in over our heads again. We oh. know this is it's for going men to In the background, who's playing it still? Who won't stop? So we wake up, lag? put our feet... Nope. There we go. Right. Welcome, everybody, to the Coffee Shop Conversation Show. Once again, your most electrifying hour of a Monday afternoon, evening, morning, depending on wherever you are in the world. Uh, either way, it's very, very nice to have you with us. Uh, and uh, this is going to be quite a special uh, coffee shop conversation show because we have got a particular topic, which is self-awareness and emotional intelligence in entrepreneurship. And we will be discussing that and uh, listening to our specialist speaker as well. Uh, I am, as always, James Brown from James Brown Voice, your voiceover with soul. You know you have an incredible product. You know you give amazing service. And I'm here to make sure that everyone else does too. Uh, and normally I would be here with my wonderful co-host Sandra Way, but poor Sandra has uh, has some urgent uh, family business she must take care of. So I'm here with my wonderful and equally beautiful co-host Peter today. Hello, Peter. How are you? You ready to jump into this ship? Yeah, I think I think we're ready. Um, you know, it's, it's actually quite funny when all the vital parts of a machine seem to seem to fall out of the machine. Completely uh, you, you realize how valuable those parts are. Yes, like the uh, engine or the petrol in my car. Very important bits. Yes, uh, very days. important. But fortunately, we have engines and petrol here, so it's all fine. And we can rock on for the next hour because uh, I shall introduce uh, Mr. Rob Murray, who is here to tell us a little bit more about uh, today's specialist subject. And uh, introduce it for us, if you would, Rob. Tell us a little bit about it. Thanks, James. Um, I'm Rob Murray, so I've got about a decade of entrepreneurial experience. Most of it has been focused on kind of the education space. So I'd say fostering educational excellence, uh, facilitating career success. So, so as an entrepreneur, I've run initiatives over the years that basically kind of transform learning landscapes and guide youngsters into successful careers okay so currently i am the managing director of the sa accounting academy and yeah there we shape financial education we shape professional development and we've created a vibrant community of over twenty eight thousand learners and professionals and yeah the the interest there is obviously for them to achieve their kind of excellence in the in the financial domain and my mission in that space is deeply rooted in the kind of synergy between education and professional attainment, right? 
So it's innovation, excellence, empowerment. So, so that's a bit, bit of an intro. Um, so the next topic of this insightful journey we're looking into in entrepreneurship is going to be, as was introduced, is the role of self-awareness and emotional intelligence. Uh, the previous topic, uh, which was covered by Nestine, was being an entrepreneur, the mindset and motivation. So what we're going to do today is just to explore a very vital yet often overlooked aspect of an entrepreneur's success, and that's self-awareness and emotional intelligence. So previously, with a mindset and the driving forces, we kind of recognized that beyond the business models and the strategies, like the, the technical stuff, the true essence uh, lies within the entrepreneur themselves, right? So here we talk, we we taking kind of step inwards. Uh, we're taking a step into the realm of self-awareness and emotional intelligence. And I'll, I'll just, I'll kind of split the two. We can look at self-awareness just high level first. So for me, I see it as a mirror, okay? So it, it kind of reflects not just who we are, but also how we are perceived in the kind of entrepreneurial space. So it's about recognizing our strengths, seeing what our weaknesses are, and kind of the triggers that sway our emotions and the decisions that we make. Okay. And then on the emotional intelligence side, my view on that is the kind of the ability to manage not just your own emotions, but also those of the others that are around or connected to you. So in in the kind of entrepreneurial journey, this the skill in my view, it's like navigating through a storm with a calm and steady hand, right? If that makes any sense. So it's, it's like building relationships, understanding team dynamics, and then making decisions that resonate, but not just logically, but they also resonate emotionally as well. So in, in the entrepreneurial space, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the, the uncertainty is the only certainty. Okay, that's my my entrepreneurial journey. <laughs> so self-awareness and emotional intelligence become your kind of compass and your anchor to navigate that storm. You know, they, they help us understand our teams, our markets, and the most important thing is they help us understand ourselves. So basically, what I what I'd like to try and achieve today is not just talking about these concepts in theory, but kind of going through some some actionable steps, uh, potentially like a roadmap to actually mastering emotional intelligence in, in one's entrepreneurial journey. And then basically looking at how self-awareness and emotional intelligence can transform your entrepreneurial experience. Because it's not just about building a business. It's about building yourself to lead the business effectively. Make sense? Uh, that, that's my two cents. Oh, Rob, I absolutely love that. <laughs> I, I, I think, um, you know, I think we when we when we tap, tackle these topics, I, and I, I think a lot a lot of these topics are overlooked. Like you mentioned in the beginning, mm. they're definitely overlooked, and people don't take them seriously, and then they wonder why in three years' time their business only lasted three years. Yeah. Um, for me, um, emotional intelligence and awareness of what's happening around you. Is probably one of the biggest factors in decision making. You, mm. you can only really make decisions if you know not only yourself, but what exactly is going on around you. Um and how and, and how those the individuals around you, how they are interacting with each other, that then gives you the ability to be strategic as well as making decisions. So I think I think this topic is extremely powerful. Um, and I, mm. and and it's not given and it's not given enough credit. And we need to oh, no, highlight how important yeah. it actually is. Um, I would love to open up the floor. And I think we can just, um, um, I think there's a few of us here. So whether we're putting up our hands on Zoom or whether we are just um, putting up our, our normal hands, if you want to jump into the conversation and just uh, give us your two cents on what emotional intelligence and uh, this awareness, what does it mean to you? Ah, oh, Mr. Levy, jump into the conversation. Because I was informed 
by Kelsey that she's going last. So I didn't really have much choice. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, working in the leadership space, first of all, <laughs> well done, Kelsey, Kelsey, because, you know, as Nelson Mandela said, good leaders always speak last. So <laughs> I just blew myself out the water there. But, yeah, I think, Rob, you know, and Peter, so what you said is so true. Um, it's such a relevant, not only relevant, significant and important topic, but yes, I think it's one that's maybe, I don't want to use the word overlooked because I think that's a bit strong. I think from since COVID, it's probably something that people are more aware of, especially in the leadership space. I don't know if the implementation is where it should be, but the awareness certainly is, so it's a good start. Um, and it's better maybe than where we were 2018 or 17 or 19. So, uh, Rob, I just made a couple of notes in terms of what you said. Yeah. Um, it's not only entrepreneurship. It's uh, I think it, you see it in the corporate space um, mm. because whether you're a, a leader of a team or a leader of your own business, you're a leader. And the first thing you need to do, that famous saying, you know, before you can lead others, you need to be able to lead yourself. And that is so true. And yeah. it's working inside out. And you spoke about building relationships. Yeah, it's very difficult to build true because this is a word I think that's also used a lot lately, authenticity. And it's very tough to build authentic relationships when you don't, when you can't even build an authentic relationship with yourself. And that you're not sure who to show up as. Um, yeah. Are you showing up? A lot of people, and I, and I say this with the utmost respect because it happened to me. And you kind of show up, a lot of the times we're showing up as people, what we think people want us to show up. And then you're not showing up. You're actually trying to fit in. And then you're not being authentic. Yeah. So I think the self-awareness is a, it's a common thread through, through everything that we do. But especially uh, seeing the topic tonight is entrepreneurship. Um, yes, we have to. It's the foundation. It's part of the foundation and a very integral part of the foundation in our business that we set or cast that we need to make sure is a solid foundation in order for us to build our entrepreneurial journey on. And if that foundation is weak, like any foundation, if your foundation is weak, there will be cracks in your structure. Yeah. So I really did, um, relate to, to what you're saying. And it's not, it's, it's kind of simple, but it's not easy. It's a tough flipping journey and maybe, yeah. but a, an extremely liberating one. I went through it. You know, I'm going to give my age away now, but <laughs> I went through it <laughs> when I was 54. Um, so it was 10, nearly 11 years ago. And, but it was tough, especially if you're going to be brutally honest with yourself and you have to be, otherwise you're only kidding yourself. And then, you know, you spoke, Rob, about, you mentioned about, it's, it's about, you are about building yourself because you, it's about people in business. And it reminded yeah. me of that, that famous quote, by, which I love, by Zig Ziglar saying, you know, you don't build a business, you build people, then the people build your business. And that is so true. But, 100%. Yeah. So, so I, I think, you know, we need to make an intentional commitment to putting in the time to discover ourselves and who we are and the core of who we are. And I'm not talking about what we skilled at and that that's easy. You know, if you ask people, who are you, they'll tell you, you know, I'm a leader in this business and they'll can tell you very clearly what they do, but they can't tell you who they are that good. Mm. And, you know, we all, we're not, we have strengths and weaknesses and we need to, I think uh, very much so because we're in a society of that's obsessed with weakness fixing. We actually need to develop our strengths and be aware of what our weaknesses are. Because yeah. I think if we were, if we were good at everything, we wouldn't need each other. So none of us are good at everything. And then but, employ people, you know, where their strengths are our weaknesses. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that, but we need to put in the time to understand what their strengths and weaknesses are, but certainly we need to put in the time first to understand what ours are. So that self-awareness that you were referring to, Rob, is, is key. And then how does that, con how does that contribute to emotional intelligence? Well, if you look at, if you look at the first two, and I'm not a certified emotional EQ person, but it's important that if you look at the first two quadrants of emotional intelligence, the first one is self-awareness and the second one 
is self-management. Yeah. Those are key to self, to emotional intelligence. And you can't manage what you're not aware of. So we have to put time into self-awareness. And in terms of a roadmap, if I can just share is it, and I'm, I'm so happy that you refer to it <laughs> as, a, as a roadmap and not a blueprint because yeah. there is a difference. It's different for everybody. And what does your roadmap look like? And the roadmap purely serves as a reference point because will we operate or behave or make decisions outside of what the core of us, what we stand for, who we are? Of course we will. We're human. That's where the power of it comes in is that we have something to reference back to and to bring us back on track if we have a roadmap. And I think it's uh, there's a there's probably the tools that I I have effectively used. I'm just speaking from my own experiences and I'm and I'm sure there's lots more than what I have to offer. But the first one is is about um, the journaling. So journaling is a great place but it, only everything, only if you're brutally honest with yourself. If you're not honest with yourself in your own journal, then you're only kidding yourself. There's nobody else going to suffer around. So, but journaling is a great place to be honest with yourself because there's no judgment, um, there's no pushback, um, and it's also a great uh, resource to refer back to and see how have you progressed if you look back and you keep your journal and i'm not talking about journaling every day and that i went here for yeah. supper and it's how you really feel it can be once every two months there's there's no fixed uh frequency to it it's how you feel but it's a great tool for learning about your yourself i think and i'm not promoting um because i'm a, a coach but coaching i'm only saying that coaching is a great tool because yeah I went for coaching before I became a coach. And that was where the transformation in my life uh, came was my coach took me on this journey where I had to take that deep dive and face my own truths. And sure, it was tough and it still continues. Um, it's, a con it's, it's infinite, but I'd, I'm more open to doing it. So I think I handled it better because of that. But initially, it, it was tough, and it takes a commitment, and you go through that those peaks and values. But it really, it's a tough journey, but a liberating one. Mm. And I think when you take, when you get to that level, and I can't tell you what point, but there is a point where you get to that level of acceptance of who you are and owning who you are. It's such a beautiful space to be in, because you can authentically show up as who you are. And it's so important for entrepreneurs to be able to do that. It's not just about the service they offer, it's who they are and how they're offering that service or product. So, th so that's key. I think those are two tools. Um, and then for me, the most powerful one, that you need to be open to it as a entrepreneur or a leader or anything, um, is feedback. Yeah. So I'm I'm just grinning because uh, in the in the article I've uh, listed a few uh, items. The first one being regular self reflection in terms of a weekly journal, <laughs> oh, wow. as well as seek and act on feedback from peers, mentors, uh, team members. You know. Yeah, I think so. Rob. so and I it's think it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, and I think one needs to be very selective in who you get the feedback from. You must be careful yeah. because you need to get feedback from people that you that you trust people that you trust are not going to say what you want, what they think you want them to say. They're going to give you honest, good feedback. It might even be not you, what you not, what don't want to hear. Um, but as long as, long as it comes from a trusted source and it's done with respect and dignity and done in um, serving the purpose of you being able to grow and develop. And I think if you open to that, and I, the reason I say that is for why is it important for entrepreneurs? Because entrepreneurs can ask a, they, if they have teams, um, they can ask them, they can ask key suppliers of theirs that are contribute, that are part of their team, and also their clients. Ask their clients for feedback in terms of service and to be open with them and say, don't 
just give me the good stuff. Give me the, what would you like me to change? What would you like to see change in me? If we're talking about specifically about self-awareness and then act on it. You know, so yeah, that's just, sure. I've spoken for too long. So now I know Kelsey's no. probably dying to get on and the set you. Oh, no. <laughs> I have no, no. I just saw I'm Kelsey's so message. <laughs> I uh, Kelsey, just go got for it a, quickly. A call. <laughs> My daughter's sick, so I have to run. Oh. oh so I, I'm sorry. I was going to uh, jump in. Please jump in. <laughs> All right. So I do need to leave. Sorry. No, no, oh, no. Right. So she feels better. Thank you, Kelsey. Take it easy, Kelsey. We'll catch up soon. Bye. All the best for your daughter. Thank you, gents. Um, uh, sorry. We don't really need to do much, do we, Peter? We just let them go. And I can do the do the rest of the session. No, 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 no. I think we need to include Lissetra in this conversation. So. And and this topic as well for me is something that um I I utilize this every day. Yeah. Every um I mean I mean in, in business when we, when we're dealing with spaces, um we have to be so aware of what's cooking. Um if we can master this. So that's why this blog post is actually this is a must read. This is a go into um the go into the description, get the link, read the blog post, and then start to exercise what is in there. Because this is um if I didn't have these skills, I wouldn't be able to perform at the level that I perform at. It would just be impossible. Um so I love I love this topic. So I I reckon let's just let's just roll with it. I don't think we need to put up hands anymore, but mm -hmm. um let's uh, and, and I'm pretty sure, James, I know you have an opinion on this topic because you always have an opinion. So <laughs> I was just thinking um, about sort of the <clears throat> like recently I went on a mindfulness, not went on a mindfulness course, but I, I, I took part in a mindfulness course. And uh, really in an attempt to kind of perhaps clear my head from all the things that perhaps are going on in um when you are when you are running a business uh, and attempting to move that business forward, but you're also attempting to you know to also manage a family uh, and give uh, time to that. And in my case, I have caring responsibilities that I also have to do. And you end up running out of time, and you and you sort of forget about yourself a little bit. I have um, I have my hour to work out. That's sacrosanct for me. I don't think I would be um, you know in a good place if I didn't have that. It really helps me. But I also wanted to try and sort of think uh, a bit about, um, you know, what also just take some time to process sort of, you know, things like being grateful for certain things. Really just, again, hopefully improving my own emotional intelligence. I've always hopefully been a relatively sensitive human being, but plenty of times I'm sure I miss those. Uh, there's plenty of things that I miss, and there's always things that one can do to work on that. Especially as men, I think it's something that probably gets missed a fair bit as well because it's not it's never been massively cool to be in touch with your emotions uh even if we obviously are emotional beings um so that's just um something that i wanted to give some time to and i found quite a lot of value in that and i also i'll be honest found value in having a time to be quiet and have someone talk to me and do some meditation with me as well and allow my brain to empty slightly um i that helped a great deal because sometimes taking that, that step back to breathe and uh, and think about things and feel a little lighter is is very important. Awesome, hundred percent. Wow, um, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, I, I think this topic is actually so broad. I mean, you like there's there's so much around it that you could, because one person's version of creating that space for themselves is completely different to somebody else's version of creating that space because we're all different humans. We all have different needs. We all think differently. We come from different cultures. Um, and, I, that's, and that's why I love this space because now we can pull those perspectives from different spaces and we can pull them into one space and we can then talk about it. And often when we do that, we actually find solutions. Um, now, I think when we limit ourselves to ourselves and our own way of thinking, uh, we limit ourselves to this is what we think is correct. And we don't then often find other solutions, um, which is sad. Um, so I think when we take a topic like this, which is brilliant, and we we open it up, we open it up and we and we discuss it and we we leave all these comments on the floor. It's, it's, now it's a great time to actually pick up all the comments and piece them together. Um, 
So, so if you're in the audience and this is something that um, that interests you, this is something that you want to learn more about, this is something you want to know more about, definitely grab the blog post. I know that Rob um, didn't go into too much detail because we want you to read the blog post. So go and read the blog post. That would make a lot more sense. Um, uh, once again, just highlighting for somebody that's catching up, the topic is awareness and emotional intelligence in entrepreneurship. Um, the searcher. I would love to bring you into this conversation because that just it, it finishes us. It creates more of a completeness. <laughs> no, thanks, Pira. And hi, Rob. Hi, uh, Mr. Levy. Hi. Mr. Brown. Um, look, generally, um, I like to take things very, very simple because uh, I don't want to, to complicate myself. I don't want to complicate my life. So I want to take things very simple. And for me, uh, what, is, what is this self-awareness? And for me, that's just being aware of who you are, what you can do, what you cannot do, what you need Mr. Levy and Rob and James and Peter to help you with, so that your entrepreneurship journey will be easy. You don't have to crack your skull. You know what you what you cannot do. I mean, if I've never been good in mathematics, I've never been good at it. So why must I now uh, go and crack my skull trying to do a theorem of, of Pythagoras and all that when I'm not good in maths? You know, if I'm not good in accounting, Get somebody that's good in accounting to help you with your books. Because otherwise, you're going to mess them up. So the best thing is know who you are, know your capabilities, and work on those. And I don't mean you cannot not learn to do your books. You can. But take it one step at a time. Don't try and go and submit your, your, your SARS things without working them out properly, without getting somebody to help you. Because you're going to mess them up. SARS is going to charge you a lot of money. And then you're going to be surprised, but I didn't make this much money. And this is what I was supposed to pay. It's because you didn't follow the steps. You, you, you rushed it, not knowing or not having taken all the steps. So know who you are, know what your cap capabilities are, and work on improving yourself step by step. I'm not going to now start acting like a professor. I'm not one. I haven't started to become a professor. So if I want to get there, I need to go on step by step. So for me, that is knowing who you are, um, um, knowing, evaluating yourself and knowing this is the person that I am. This is what I can do. I'm not going to copy uh, Mr. Brown in doing voiceovers. It's not my forte. You know, so get help from people, especially within this space, that will be able to help you, to help you grow in the direction that you want to follow. You know, so, and, and, and emotional intelligence, it's all about that. Are you in, are aware enough of who you are that you're not going to get upset when you're not able to work a one plus one? Don't be upset at yourself. So that's just, you are emotionally intelligent to say, I'm not able to do this. I'm going to work on it. Um, I'm going to ask for help and I'm going to grow in this, you know. So, and, and for those that haven't been following, uh, following our, uh, our podcast, uh, our coffee shop shows, I would advise them to, you know, go back because every week, it's a brilliant topic. I know Pierre is saying this is a brilliant topic, but every week, week in, week out, is a brilliant topic. And I just love this space. That's why, even when I was running late, I had to make sure that I, I joined in this space. So, yeah, this is Lesecha Moko from Litmok, your business development specialist. No, awesome. Uh, Peter, I just wanted to jump in. So, that that that's... That's brilliant because I think everyone's mentioned aspects that relate to, 
right? Like Stephen's talking about this roadmap because you need time for yourself. You've got exercise. You've got mindful activities. You've got journalism. You've got your mirror that you look at. But for me, it's also critical to build it into your kind of business strategy, right? Is because you, the owner, you lead by example. You implement a culture so that when people join you, when you're building your team, they plug into the same methodology you have in terms of this culture of, of you know, every evolving emotional intelligence. And it's continuous, you know? Yeah. Um, James, I don't know if you want to jump in and then I'll just respond respond next. Uh, no, you go ahead, matey. Not this one. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it, it does dive a lot deeper than just um, this is perhaps what we do separately. It, it dives a lot deeper. Um, for for me, the uh, self awareness. Yes, we do need to we do need to get to know ourselves. Uh, I think we, we're we're discussing the basics of, of something that we can take a whole lot deeper. I mean, for, for me. Um, knowing yourself and knowing your shortcomings and knowing what you're good at is just one step. Having the ability to then position yourself and be strategic about how you position yourself, be strategic about how you're positioning other people, that's where that self-awareness and emotional intelligence comes into play because you're now exercising it at a, at a, at a very high level because now you're using it to read the people around you make decisions based on who they are, make decisions based on your thoughts of their character, make decisions based on how you think they will respond based on how well you are able to be aware. Um, you know, you, you're making decisions based on, do I introduce this person to this person? Is this going to be a good business transaction? And you, you're reading both parties and your, um, and your participation in that business deal. Is this going to work? So if you if you can exercise the space, you can deep dive really deep. Um, I mean, to to me, it's even reading people's faces. You know, you re, like you're having a conversation with somebody. It's a business conversation, and they're saying one thing, but their face is saying something different. And you need to have the ability to to have that emotional intelligence to read the situation and not just the person. You can read the person, you can read the situation. So it goes really deep and it can save you a lot of hassle. And especially um, it was mentioned when building your team and surrounding yourself with people and the strategy involved. Um, you, know, you know, some people can build a team. You know, it's quite easy to build a team, but can you build a team that works? Can you build a space that functions? You know, that's where the exercise of the emotional intelligence comes into play. Um, how are you speaking to them? How are you allowing them to know you? How are you making them feel of the, like, are you making them feel like they can get to know you? Um, are you creating a space where they are comfortable enough for you to get to know them so that you can actually exercise emotional intelligence? It dives really, really deep. I mean, we can, we can talk about the surface stuff, um, but it, it goes way deeper than that. Um, you know, sometimes the silent guy in the corner of the room just watching everybody will tell you what's going to happen next because he's watching. You know, he's the guy that has read everybody in the room and he knows what's going to happen. That's exercising emotional intelligence. Um reading reading gestures reading facial expressions uh, and i think i think that is you know if you can function on that level uh, then you can put people in the same space and make it work um which i think is really important um yeah james um back to you no obviously yeah allowing that time to uh to process those things i think is is very important and and giving us the as you say making like when you talk about creating a functional space i've and, and building a team is one of the things that scares me uh i realized that i will at some point want to i, I want to outsource some uh, parts of my business uh but i was speaking to someone today about who's about to create an agency and he's taking on actual employees uh and he has and it scares the bejesus out of me <laughs> to be honest with you, because he doesn't have a, 
a clue of how he's going to be able to manage other people and like le moving that responsibility away uh, and not wanting to micromanage absolutely everything. So it's right up to the standards. You know, it's very difficult to make other people care as much as you do if it's not their business. So he's he's processing that at the moment, um, and uh, yeah, allowing those those deeper thoughts and the time to um, perhaps you know explore those things is something that we that we don't do very often. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, the teacher, your hand is up. How are you, sir? You have something to tell us as well. Yes, um, no, no. Pira mentioned something about um, reading the situation. I, I, ju I just thought I'd mention, especially when you are in sales um you you prepare your presentation to whoever your uh, potential client is but when you get there you don't now start reading from the script you need to study the situation you need to study the person that you're going to speak to so how you you start the conversation must be led by you're reading the situation. Otherwise, um, you're going to lose it. You know, somebody will, will, will come in with a strict, stern face, and I'm just giving an example, who wants you to get onto business immediately, and you will then start talking about the weather and all that. You've lost it. Or somebody comes in, and they are very friendly, and you get onto business immediately. You've lost it. You've lost the sale. So you've got to be able to read and pick up very subtle signs of how am I going to approach this one? Yes, you can follow a script, but you've got to be able to um, 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 change it or slightly tweak it so that uh, you present it the right way to the right person. So I just thought I'll, I'll mention that, Peter, when you mentioned you've got to be able to read the, um, the surroundings, the people, you know. Oh, 100%, 100%. Uh, and I percent, hundred percent, and I, I think some people function in that space um, naturally. Some people just have the natural ability to to read people, read the situation, and they are in that space of emotional intelligence naturally. Um, but then there are those people that it does not come naturally. But it doesn't mean it can't be learnt or understood. This is something you can learn. And it's something that you can practice. And the more you practice it, the better you become. And the more situations you put yourself in and the more you utilize those skills, the easier it becomes, uh, which I think is very important. And you'll actually find that, and I, this may sound, this sound counterproductive, but you will find that some of the most um, self-aware and emotionally intelligent people on the face of the planet, and hear me on this, are drug addicts. Literally, they know what they want and they have to get it from you and they are emotionally intelligent intelligent enough to lie and say what they need to say to get what they want from you so that they can get what they need. S strange, it's strange, but it's true. It's actually a superpower. They have this ability to um, twist everything and they're exercising that constantly their driving force is the fact that they need a fix. But it doesn't change the fact that they are exercising that emotional intelligence and they will play on your heartstrings until you give them all the cash in your wallet. And then the first thing they will do is they will go to the dealer and you've just been had. They are emotionally intelligent and they're getting what they want. Um, it works for them. They exercise it. They utilize it. They... Um, so I know it does it does sound backwards, but it's true. Um, we as business people and entrepreneurs and professionals, if we had the same level of skill as an sounds wrong, but the same level of skill as an addict trying to convince you that you need to do something so that he can have a fix, we would all be millionaires. We would all just be millionaires. That, 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 that's just how it is. Um Yeah, I, I, I think if you've got experience with that in in this space, just drop drop a comment. This this will be on the YouTube channel. Drop a comment if you think what I'm saying is correct. If it's not, tell me why. I'm curious. I'd like to know. Um, Mr. Levy, 
please jump back into the conversation. That was fascinating <laughs> comment that you just made. And I think, yeah, it, uh, also for a good discussion. Um, I don't know if we've got time here because, uh, yeah, it's they probably are highly emotionally intelligent. Um, I'm not sure. I'd love to hear more about it. I think there's also a fine line between that and manipulative. Um, so, but maybe they use the emotion until I'm not qualified to to say that. Um, but I, I, I think also, I just want to touch on what the searcher said, which is very important. I think the more you, so when you're dealing with clients or customer, as he said, in terms of doing the presentations or sales pitch or whatever you're doing with them, comes back to what Explore Protect stands for. And that's copy first, business later. You need to build relationships to understand your client. You can't just go in the first meeting and do a presentation and you're going to make the presentation to their needs. But so it's important to build those relationships. But I think when you are self, that self-aware or got to a level of self-awareness um, and acceptance and ownership of who you are, it actually removes any form of judgment. You stop judging people. A lot of times people, we form our own judgment of people based on our own insecurities or what we're looking at, but we don't want to admit. So I think that's important. And especially for, again, entrepreneurs, if you're in your, your business, get to know yourself. It's going to have huge benefit um, coming back to this topic tonight in terms of you, how you run your business, how you show up outside of your business. Um, and people will pick that up. They will pick up the authenticity or not. And it's, it, I think that's very important. Um, and it's not being, as I think Lasech or Rob mentioned, uh, it's not being a know all. Uh, it's sh maybe sharing your experiences. And I think that's powerful. You know, you've had on this show before about storytelling. Tell your story. You know, it's, it, it's, if it's related to that, it, it, it's huge. And coming back to, I think there's something that uh, Rob Murray said was, he said, make it part of your business. It's a, it's a strategy. It's part of your strategy. It's not an add on to your strategy. It's not maybe I should do it. You are very much a part of your strategy. So if I can share then an experience where I went, I went through like um, close to burnout, not burnout and, and depression couple of years apart, ten, about 10 years apart. But both cases, I had to go and see a psychologist. The first one next burnout was the first time because as a South African male, and PDU said that, or well, said that we feel we need to be bulletproof. It's a society that we brought up in. Or, or James. James said, yeah, yeah, as men. So I made that. But <laughs> this is how we were brought up. And the psychologist that I went to see and that was in 1996 or five. Uh, there's one lesson I will never, ever forget. She asked me, why have I worked myself to the state that I'm in? And I said, because I have a responsibility to the people that work in the factory with, for me, to my family. She said, that's interesting. She said, you tell me all these people that you care for, but you're about a month away from being hospitalized and hopefully without a heart attack. How good are you going to be to these people that you tell me you care so much for, you know, from a hospital bed? And she said, left me with one, I left there with one thing. She said, the most important, and this comes to what Rob said, the most important appointment you can ever make in your business diary or any diary is with yourself. And I will never, ever forget that. And I think, you know, yeah, you know this, and then coming back to your emotions, when I went through um, a depressive, so this was in 2012, I saw, I saw a psychologist too, and the day and the night that I phoned, I, I'd got to such a state that I had to phone her because I didn't want to, because it was like, you know, Stephen, you can't be that weak, and now you've got to go see a psychologist. But it got to the point where I had to, and um, she said to me that night, I said, I want to come see you tomorrow, it was a Sunday night. And I want to come see you tomorrow. And she said, that's fine. She said, but whether you go with me or not, irrespective, I want to say one thing to you as a South African male. Okay. I must commend you just for picking up the phone and asking for help. So 
there were big lessons. There were big lessons in that and big turning points for me. So if I can share that with with entrepreneurs, with leaders, and that just yeah, like James uh, just put in the chat box. You know, we taught uh, tigers don't cry. Uh, yeah, we allowed to we we allowed to wear our hearts and our sleeves. And it's actually good because you give other permission to people permission to do the same, especially if you're going to build these teams that you're referring to. If we want to build high performing, cohesive teams, we need to make it a safe place for them to be vulnerable. Because everybody has mentioned tonight that we are not perfect. We are not good at everything. We are not strong and be okay with that. You know, and then just the last thing I want to say is it also helps us understand our triggers. Because will we get emotional? Will we get triggered? Will we get upset? Will we get angry? Will we, of course we will. Will we respond the way we don't want to? I don't care how emotionally intelligent. Of course we will. I think people who are emotionally intelligent will catch it quicker and do it probably less regularly. Um, and they will be able to correct it. So yeah, it, it's, it's just such a great topic. And Rob, thanks for, for bringing it up and sharing it. And I know how passionate you are about entrepreneurship. So yeah, it's, and Pete, as you say, this is not something that we, we could discuss this probably for days here, not, to, not in an hour. Uh, but thank you for, for everyone's input in it and the topic itself. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, going into such detail, it's, uh... Yeah, it's really, really useful to hear. Uh, and Owen, obviously, I think giving us the uh, the opportunity to take, yeah, all the permission to take the time to to look into it more deeply is is very important. It really is very important. So I shall have a look at that blog uh, later on today. And uh, I think we've kind of come full circle by the looks of things. So, um, Rob, you can see us out, I think, unless we've got uh, a little bit more time. Yeah, I, I just wanted to kind of build on on what scenarios other people have been coming up with in terms of business side because I think a lot of it, uh, it is short as a skill. It's a skill you can develop, but you, you kind of have to recognize that and stay committed to doing the – whatever it is. Put yourself in a slightly uncomfortable situation. Go to – a networking thing that you didn't want to go to or, you know, but I think empathy and communication is critical because in any business case, in any personal case, if you truly practice like active listening, even with your clients, it's, it's, it's a world of difference. It's not something you just wake up and do. You try it, you know, you're going to fail, maybe you know, upset a few people, maybe, <laughs> but if you don't go out there and try it, it's, you know, you're never going to develop the skill. I mean that's that's my my kind of summary, you know, of the the thoughts. Oh, awesome! Um, I, I I think we could actually carry on talking forever. Unfortunately, we are running out of time. Um, so James, I don't know if you want to finish off, or if I should finish off. If you want, got something you want to, anything left that we need to say? I don't think so. Um. It's unusual for us to perhaps have such uh, an in-depth chat, um, but obviously this is a—I think it's something that that, that resonates with uh, with the group here in particular. Um, and it's interesting to have an all-male group for once. I have to say, it's perhaps talking about something emotional which we might not necessarily talk about. So yeah, well done, chaps. <laughs> awesome, uh, absolutely. If there are comments from ladies coming in. Please do fire those in as well. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, actually, ladies in the comments. Um, let us know what you think. Uh, we're being all emotional and vulnerable. So um, what what fun we're having. Um, so I think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to a close. Do, do, do yourselves a favor. Grab the blog post. It'll be, the link will be in the description. Um, have a read. Make comments. I mean, the whole point of this space is to create solutions for problems that are out there. You as the audience, if that is something that is a problem for you or it's somebody that you know about, drop some comments into the chat. Um, you know, let, let's let's talk about it. You know, and next week we'll be back with oh, one of the biggest professionals ever. I think it's oh wait, oh wait, that's me. That's I, I, I think I think I'm next week. I think I'm next week's topic. Oh, so if you're goodness. looking, 
you can look forward to that. Um, I promise I won't brag too much. Um, and let's just have some fun with it. Um, I, I do know that we have created these topics in advance, so you can see what's coming up next, uh, where it's coming from, uh, the conversation. Be part of the conversation. Don't just watch the show. Become part of the conversation. Make comments, start a conversation, let's have a chat. Um, I'll, I'll drop some links into the description. You know, if something really tickles your fancy, reach out. I'll drop, I'll drop a, a meeting link. Reach out. Let's talk about it. And I will end the show off with the most famous saying from Nestine Boerter, which is 